Okay, so in this video we are going to perform the second part of the methyl orange reaction which is the workup part. So uh, in the previous first part we have included in the description you can watch from here. So now let's start workup of the methyl orange reaction to get the final product. Now we are heating this solution to dissolve. So this is a workup part where reaction is complete now we are going to crystallize this one so we have to heat this solution to make it uh, completely dissolve or translucent so it's uh, almost done with the heating part uh, it started to get kind of a lot lighter kind of a lot more uh, kind of see-through uh, we found that the best way to do it was somewhat uh, moderate temperatures just over like 120 ish um, and really fast stirring the faster the stirring it kind of we see we're at like 900 rpms um, faster stirring really kind of helps get this solid dissolved so we probably have another maybe five or ten minutes before it's fully dissolved and we can uh, continue with the recrystallization so we've finally get, gotten everything to dissolve for the most part so uh, next part we just need to recrystallize the methyl orange so we'll take it off the heat uh, let it cool just to room temperature and then we'll put it in an ice bath and get it to be uh, really cold so we'll go ahead and turn off the heat and we can turn off the stirring as well just to uh, kind of help promote the crystals to start forming we can take it off of the heat just to let it cool down a little bit faster we don't want to set it on the on this yet because it's too cold and it might uh, shock it. Um, if anything, we can grab a cork ring and set it back down just so it's not so bad. But yeah, we'll take the stir bar out here in a sec. Um, but yeah, we're pretty much done with, with this workup. So we lowered it down to the cork ring just so it wasn't hanging in the air. We're gonna go ahead and take out our stir bar. Uh, there's not too much product on it, so we can go ahead and just set this off to the side. We'll let it crystal, we'll let it kind of cool down to room temperature and then uh, put it in the ice bath and it's cooler. So we're gonna go ahead and move it to the ice. You can see we're already getting solid uh, crystals to precipitate. So we'll set it in the ice for about maybe 10 minutes uh, and we should get quite a few crystals to form. So we've let it crystallize for about 15 minutes now. Uh, you can see we have quite a good amount of solid kind of down there at the bottom. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do this vacuum filtration. So we also went ahead and cooled down some water just to help with the rinse. Uh, so first, turn on our vacuum. I already measured out uh, the mass of the filter paper. So we've already got that. We wanna make sure we wet it first to get a good seal and then we can start our filtration. Take our spatula, kind of scrape. A lot of product here. Yeah very fine, it's kind of like sandy uh, type of crystals here. We can take our wash bottle and give the bottle a good rinse. This is water to wash? Yes, this is just water. Yeah, we got a little bit on the outside, but we got pretty much everything out of our Erlmeyer glass. We're gonna break this up just a little bit to help it kind of dry. These bigger chunks. After that, one drain. 
Yeah, so we'll we'll let it kind of rinse for just a second. You probably won't need this beaker of water. This is probably good. So we'll let it uh, we'll let it suction dry for just a sec, uh, and then get it onto the swatch glass and put it in the oven for just a couple minutes, and then get a mask for it. So now we're gonna get our filter paper. Try to get it off of the funnel. Right there. We do have like very small amounts of product kind of stuck to it. Try to scrape it out just to kind of get as much as we can. Yeah. All right. So we'll sit this. We'll put this in the oven for about five minutes or so. All right. Make sure our oven is on. We'll just put it right here. It'll rack. So we just got it out of the oven, about to get our the mass of our product, add a tear there. the mass of our paper from that to get the mass of our product. So for the uh, spectroscopy part, it says to get five to 10 milligrams of your product. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. We zeroed out our uh, new wave boat. Try to pick up just a little bit of the product. Maybe this end would be better to scoop. It's a very tiny amount that we're looking at. Trying to grab. A little bit more, didn't register on the scale. So we finally got enough little crumbs and we're up to 0 0.06, so yeah, we'll call that 6 milligrams. Um, so now we need to make our solution. So when you're making things uh, quantitatively, using really small amounts of solid and kind of big dilute amounts, you can make sure everything's very precise and very accurate, so you don't uh, have any kind of errors in your uh, calculation. So whenever you make quantitative solutions, you use volumetric flasks. First we're going to add a little bit of water, then add our solid, and then dilute up to the line. You don't want to add the solid directly first, it needs to be already in solution. Is it one liter or five? This is 500, 500 ml. 500 ml. So we'll add maybe about 100, 150-ish milliliters of water. We will add our solid. this. Notice there are some specs still in the wave boat and like I said you want everything to be uh, very precise so we're going to try to wash in every little bit of our solid that we weighed so that we account for it in our solution. We also have some stuck to the sides so we're going to wash that down. and then we can dilute up to the fill line right here. So the way I like doing this is having it just below and then being able to kind of really finely Put in the rest with the skirt bottle. And again, you want the bottom of the meniscus, the little dip right there to be right at the line. So a little bit more. And there we go, that's exactly 500.0 milliliters. So we'll put parafilm on here and shake it around to get uh, the solids to dissolve and then we'll be able to take uh, spectroscopic reading. So we'll cut ourselves a new square of parafilm. use the 
side that was up against the paper so that we don't introduce any kind of contaminants into the flask. Try to get a good seal on it, just like this. Now the best way to mix these, um, you're not going to be able to really mix it like this. So what you want to do is use this air bubble. You'll invert it and then re-invert it. So you'll go back and forth. This is how you mix your uh, kind of quantitative solutions. So we'll mix until all of these little uh, solid bits are gone and then we'll be able to do our spectroscopy. All right, so once we got our solid completely dissolved, I went ahead and took the parafilm off and just transferred a little bit into here just to make it easier to pour into our cuba. Uh, so before we take the absorbance of this, we need to calibrate the spectrophotometer. Uh, to do that, we're just gonna use water as our blank. Uh, it's important that you use Kim wipes to wipe down the sides of the cuba so that you don't get any smudges that affect your absorbance. Cool. I don't know if you're able to see, but there's a very small arrow right here. It'll line up with this arrow right here. So we're going to go ahead and click. Uh, so it says place blank cuvette in the device. Place it in like that, and then we'll finish the calibration. Awesome. So we'll click OK. Now that we have our blank set, we'll go ahead and fill this cuvette about three-fourths of the way full with our solution. Place our cap on, and then again, we want to use our Kim wipe. Absorbance maximum. Next up, there it goes. So our absorbance maximum here, right at 0 0.729. Uh, might be a little bit higher. It's lower. 3.1 looks like. Cool. So that's the very peak of our graph right here. So that's the absorbance that we're going to be using. 3.731. So here we're going to add uh, hydrochloric acid into a little bit of our uh, sample. Should turn red. Yeah, look at that. Cool. So we've confirmed that HCl is an acid. <laughs> so now we're going to test sodium hydroxide. It should turn kind of like a yellowish orange kind of a color. Uh, it's already pretty, pretty pale yellow, but we'll see if we see a color change. It actually got a little bit darker, kind of. Uh, but yeah, no real color change because it's already pretty yellow. Uh, as we would expect for something like a basic solution. Uh, we can see it kind of yellowy. As uh, a solution, we would see kind of more reddish color. Alright, so now time for the calculations portion of the Methyl Orange Lab. So, first we need to calculate our periodical yield. So to do that, we need to first find uh, how many moles of each reactant we use. So we'll start with sulfonylic acid, uh, we'll just abbreviate it as SA. We use 0.503 grams, divide by the molecular weight, you get 2.9 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of it. And then our other reactant was in a dimethyl aniline. So this was a liquid, so we have 0.5 milliliters of it. So we first have to multiply by the density to get it into grams, and then we can divide by the molecular weight and then we'll get 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, moles. So that means that this is the, we'll call it excess reagent, this is our limiting reagent. 
So now we'll proceed with our limiting reagent to find our theoretical yield. And just a note, we're going to call methyl orange MO. So we have our moles of uh, sulfonylic acid. Uh, we have a mole, mole ratio of just one to one. And then uh, we'll have our molecular weight of methyl orange. Multiply all that out, and this is the theoretical yield we would expect to get for uh, methyl orange if everything went perfectly. So as far as our actual yield went, uh, the mass of our filter paper with our product on it was 0.755, and then we weighed our filter paper and it was 0.172. Uh, so you subtract those and you get 0.583 for our actual yield. And then lastly for our percent yield, just actual over theoretical, so 0.583 over 0.949 uh, times 100, and then you'll get 61.4%. So not the best, but uh, definitely not terrible. So now for the... Uh, spectros uh, spectroscopic analysis part of the calculations. So the spectroscopy was to find the concentration of our solutions. So we dissolved six milligrams of the product in, uh, and it was 500 uh, milliliters of water. Uh, first we gotta get grams, or I guess moles. First we gotta get moles. So we'll divide by 1,000 milligrams per gram, just to get into uh, grams, and then divide by the molecular weight of methyl orange to get into moles. And then we'll divide by uh, how much water we use to get into a molar unit. So that was 0.5 liters. We got 3.66 times 10 to the negative five molar, uh, theoretically. According to our uh, spectroscopy, we use the equation, kind of like the back of the procedure, where we have, it's kind of like y equals mx, there's no like b. Uh, so absorbance is the y, and then the concentration is the x. So you can solve for concentration by dividing by your slope right here. Our absorbance was 0.731. So whenever you divide by this number here, you'll get point, or sorry, 4.27 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. Um, just note that the concentration here is in units of times 10 to the negative 5. If you just do this division, you just get you know, 4.27. But you got to tack that part on. So lastly, for our purity, again, it's just actual over theoretical times 100. So we actually got uh, 4.27 times 10 to the negative five, and this is our theoretical. You divide, multiply by 100, and you get 116% purity. So theoretically, this shouldn't be possible. Um, there's a couple explanations for what happened. Most likely what happened is when our we did our recrystallization step, we probably didn't fully dissolve everything into the solution. So uh, once we recrystallized out, it wasn't a full recrystallization and there were still impurities in there that were able to absorb whenever we did the spectroscopy. So we got the stuff that was absorbing that shouldn't have been in there in the first place, which caused our absorbance to be too high, which caused this to be too high, which caused our purity to be over 100%. So that's probably the most likely reason why we have you know, purity over 100%.